we go. Uh, okay, this is kind of a hard one. Two things happening. What is happening in here? Kendall, are you supposed to be somewhere? Um, all right, so here we go. F of negative 2x. Tell me what that changes. What changes this time? What's that negative do? Sideways flip. And what does the 2 times the x do? Divides the width by 2. So you can do all that once, or you can do that in two steps. Let's look at this trapezoid. How wide is he? One, two, three, four. So if I divide that by two, he's going to be two. And he's going to get sideways flip. So he's going to be two wide over here. That makes sense to everybody. He was on the left. He's going to the right. He was four wide. Now he is two wide. Now, how about our semicircle? Well, how wide is he? Four. So now he's going to be two. And he's originally on the right, so now he'll go to the left. He's still down, but he's half as wide and on the other side. Is that okay with everyone? All right, what happens with this guy? He's definitely going to go up one. What else? Bottoms up. So whatever's underneath is going to come up. All right? So I'm going to do one at a time. What's happening with my trapezoid? Go back to the original picture. What's happening to my trapezoid? Nothing, right, to start with? Bottoms up. But the circle is going to go... So I'm not done yet. I'm not done. But is that okay for the bottoms up part of it? So now I'm going to take this guy and lift him up one. change. How wide is my trapezoid? Four. So four divided by one half. That's what's happening. How do I do divided by a half? Keep change flip. So how wide is that tri or that, that trapezoid now? Eight. So Everything, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm back over here at eight. You don't have to label, I just down. You don't have to. So instead of going over four, I have to go over eight. So this point over one is now going to be over two. 
all the widths are getting doubled. This one is one, two, three, over three. So he's gonna be over six. And there is my big fat trapezoid. Every X basically got doubled. Technically, it got divided by a half, but that's the same as doubling it. Now, what's going to happen to this circle? Same thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be clear over here. We still want to go down one, so he's very shallow. And there it is. Two. Oh no, that's not a down. What's that? That's a right three. When is it a down three? When the three is outside the parentheses, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move everything right three first. So if I move everything right three, instead of this point being at negative four zero, it's now going to be at negative one zero. And that end point, instead of being at the origin, is going to be a three. So now my trapezoid is going to be drawn in here. Make sense to everybody? It's still four wide. I haven't changed that. All I did was pick it up and move it. And now I'm going to tack my circle on. We have moved right. How low is that point right there, the circle point? How low is that? So it's going down to, see? And the red one is the answer. Let a right three stretched two. And then the last one has three things going on. Three things are happening in this picture. What are they? What's going on? What's that negative do? Upside down. What's the two do? Same as that one. It's going to multiply the height. And what's this? I know it's absolute value, but what do I do with that particular absolute value? Draw the right and mirror left. All right, so one step at a time. Draw the right side. So I'm just going to draw the right side. <coughs> Now, I 
I'm going to make that twice as tall. I'm going to do this part. I'm going to make it twice as tall. Oh, hey, can I go ahead and do this too? Make it twice as tall and flip it upside down. So instead of bubbling down, these guys are going to bubble oh. up. And instead of being one, they're going to be two. So here is that one. First one is a box. Read the question. What is your equation for the volume of the box going to be? Y equals what? Thank you, Daniel. 10 minus 2x. 16 minus 2x times x. Never changes. Only the numbers change. What's the domain, Daniel? Do you know that? What's the domain going to be? Five, uh, oh, zero. Zero, five. Five, yep. And where did you get five? Five from the ten. And you use ten because it's the smallest. And we take half of it. Very, very good. That's your domain. So now we'll go to our calculator. Two things. Reset your window, zero to five. And then retype in your equation. You got to type in this equation or you won't get the right answer. And then second calc maximum. Um, when I graphed, when I pressed graph, I actually saw my hill, which is what I need to see. Remember, if you're not seeing the hill, you can make your Y max in your window make that bigger. If your calculator does not literally say the word maximum, then you haven't done it right. When you're all done, press guess, there it is. The calculator will say this is the maximum. And I got essentially 2 comma 144. Is that what you got? I got 1.999999, so I'm going to make that 2. And what does that mean? The maximum volume is 144 cubic inches. And what is the two? two? What's the two? It's the size of the corners you cut out of the paper. Okay. This was on the quiz you just took. What would be the setup for problem number three? 1655. And then 1.07. And then. No, not 0.8. Not 0.8. 1.2. Guys? Do tips get added on or taken off of your bill? Just like tax, right? So that's going to be 1.2. 100 plus 20.
think it helps because it keeps you focused on where to put your numbers in the problem. It's up to you. So how much, 28%, should be mixed with 20 cups of 10% to get some Kool-Aid that is 22%? Does that make sense? I'm just going to go here. X plus 20 or 20 plus X. The order doesn't matter, okay? So X plus 20 or 20 plus X. remember you're going to have a distribute and there's sometimes we forget about that when you do distribute. Anybody have a question about that? You okay with that? All right, last year's tuition was 11.8. This year it's 12.2. Find the percent of increase. What do I do? Take the difference in these, which is 400, I think, and divide it by the original and make it 8% because it's going to come out a decimal on the calculator. So I'm getting 3.39%. I got 0.33389. I'll move it two places and then round it off. So 3.39, and that was an increase. Okay with that? All right, so we have page of graphs, page of word problems. Now we're gonna have two pages, I squeezed them into one, but we're gonna have two pages of this random parametric and inverse stuff. First thing, got this picture. You 100% don't need to label these points, but I really think it might help you because question D says sketch the inverse. And how do we do that? How do we sketch the points written down, um, it might help you to sketch it. All right, I'll sketch it in a minute. First question A. Oh, I didn't connect my dot. Is this a function? Is that thing right there a function? Yes, because passes vertical line test. Is its inverse? Question B asks about the inverse. No, because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. This doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Is it a one-to-one -one function then? No, because you have to pass both tests, right? Now, what's the inverse going to look like? Well, that point's going to become 0, negative 2. Remember, you're flipping it around, so 0, negative 2. 
that's going to become 2, negative 1, and then 0, 0 is a change. 1, 1 isn't changing, but that's 0, 2. Negative 1, 3. Negative 1, 4. And 0, 5. That's what your inverse should look like. And that was super simple to do. I simply took every ordered pair from the original and flipped it around and then connected them in order. On the test, will there be a separate graph for us? Okay, number seven, find the inverse. This was a quiz question. By golly, I hope nobody misses it. This was a quiz question. How do we do that? Switch my variables, right? And then what? Bring this over to here. So 2y plus 1 times x equals 3y minus 8. And then what? Distribute. So 2yx plus x, you're distributing here, equals 3y minus 8. And here comes the tricky step. What do I need to do? I need to flip flop these two. So I'll have 2yx minus 3y, I'm bringing this guy over equals negative x minus 8. We good? Now what? Pull the y out, factor the y out, GCF, just regular factoring. So 2x minus 3. And then my inverse will be this guy divided by the 2x minus 3. Question about that? Did I do that too fast? Got it? Switch those variables to start and then get y by itself. Number eight is the one we haven't done much of. Does anybody remember how we did this yesterday? You have to show whether these things are inverses or not. What did we do yesterday? Does anybody remember? Okay, so we don't need to choose seven, but we can. We'll go ahead and pick seven. So here are my two functions. Okay, and if I put seven in for x, you get to pick your number. Not zero and not one. Pick a number. Seven is great. So if I put in 7, I get 17. 2 times 7 plus 3. Now, take the 17 and put it into G. If they are 
inverses, what will happen? You get seven. So do we? 17 minus three over two, what does that equal? Are they inverses? Yes, because I started with seven and ended with seven. Yep, got seven at the end. That did not happen yesterday. I don't remember the numbers, but we put seven in and got 12 or something. Then we put in 12 and got eight. They're not inverses, because if they're inverses, if you start with seven, you're going to end with seven because the variables switch. Number nine, the problem number got punched out there. But what's the, um, what's the strategy here? This is the easiest question on the test. If you miss this, you need to be clobbered. What do we do? How do we find X and Y? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for an X and a Y. How do we find them? Plug in negative two. So if I put in negative two right here, what do I get for X? X equals negative three. I put in negative two right here. And then what will Y equal if I put in negative two? Four, done. All you're doing, the question says find X, find Y. Okay, there's X, there's Y. I'm letting T be negative two, just plug it in, and that'll take care of it. Now, 10 is a little bit more involved. Look at those directions. Find a direct algebraic relationship between X and Y. Who remembers what that translates into? What does that really mean? Get rid of T. Get rid of T. Get rid of T. So how do you want to get rid of T? There's a couple of ways to do it. In this case, it'd be kind of easy. What do you think? We have been eliminating, which you can absolutely do that. Um, I don't like having a fraction, so I'm going to multiply this by 2. So my equation is x equals 4 minus 2t, and then 2y equals t. Those are my equations, times by 2. Will the t's eliminate right now? No? So I'm going to have to multiply by another 2. So I have x equals 4 minus 2t, and 4y equals 2t. Now will the t's eliminate? So x plus 4y, always remember these do not combine. So it's x plus 4y equal to, the only thing I have left over here is 4. The directions to problem number 10 mean, as some of Becker said, get rid of T. All right, and then the last one, this is the hard one, I think. Look at picture one and picture two. Can you see anything that's happened? Let's just make a list. What has happened to change from picture one to picture two? Upside down, that's happened for sure, upside down. <coughs> anything else changed? Height is double. So it's twice the height. Anything else? I think there's one more thing that's happened. I don't think it's flipped sideways. Isn't the triangle still on the left? Yeah. I think what it's done, though, is dropped down to. 
So now you need to write an equation, you know, like at the beginning of the test, we had things like this. You're going to write an equation like that. So we have y equals f of x, and then we have to do something to it. So how do we make it go upside down? Negative in front, I'll put a negative out here. How do I make it twice the height? Put a two out here, so now it's a negative two. How do I make it go down two? Minus two on the end, and there we go. There's your equation. What does the test look like? This. So you are going to have one of those on your test. So I would suggest you do what I did. Make a list of what changed, and then remember the rules and build it in your equation. Huh? The x is part of the original function. Remember, the original function is f of x, and when you're putting stuff in there, so the x does nothing. It's part of the problem. It will be part of your problem. There are, because we have to do digital readiness tomorrow, 